that's the accident, son. But your sister will be all right. Has the doctor come? No. Dr. Watkins hasn't arrived yet, and Dr. Grange is still operating. But you've got to do something. There's nothing I can do, Mr. Wayne. There isn't a surgeon available. I'm sorry. Doctor. Dr. Sawyer, you brought my sister in. Can't you do something for her? I'd like to, young fella, but I'm only an intern. I'm not allowed to operate. What's the trouble? Oh, she's lost quite a bit of blood. Internal hemorrhage and shock. Automobile accident. They've sent for a donor for a transfusion. Why don't you wait quietly until Dr. Grange is free? Quietly? Could you, if your sister was... Look, couldn't I just say hello to her, just so she knows I'm around to sort of look after her? Come on, son. Hi, sis. No heart stimulation from the adrenaline? Hey, Diana, you, you got to snap out of this. We've located a group three donor, but it'll take him 30 minutes to get here. 30 minutes? All right. The blood donor's coming. But not soon enough. I saw your face. You can do something. You're really a doctor, aren't you? I will be tomorrow. At least that's what my certificate will say. Then you've got to save her. She's all I've got. Nurse. Yes, doctor? Don't take a chance, Rob. I'm operating. You heard me. You can't, Ralph, but tomorrow you... You don't measure humanity by 24 hours. Well, don't stand there. Get the patient ready. Yes, Doctor. Son, I'd push stretchers around here before you knew a scalpel from a Boy Scout's knife. Don't do it. This girl's hemorrhaging to death. Yes, I know, but a good-looking girl doesn't make you a surgeon. Well, neither will my name on a certificate. Hurry up with that, will you? Is it the first one you ever smoked, too? No, thanks. Okay, Tom, you can stop concentrating now. Oh, gee, Doc. Gee. Didn't saw any sponges in, did you? How do you feel, all right? Much better now. What you need is some black coffee, son. Oh, I'm okay. My feet just feel like soft butter. Black coffee for you. Come on, Ralph. Hey, what's going on here? Who needs that coffee now? Hamburgers and coffee, Doc? Yep. Kid will take his black. Me too. How is she, Doctor? Uh, I think she's gonna be all right. I hope so. Well, I hope so too, for your sake. Gee whiz, Doctor, were you getting any trouble? Oh, no, he just broke the one unbreakable hospital rule, performing an operation on someone without authority to do so. They'll probably decorate him and mount him in the Hall of Fame. 
then we won't need those offices in the professional building or the rich patients on Park Avenue. He won't. I will. Gee, I'm sorry, Doc. Oh, skip it. We started out together, Frank. I hope we're finished that way. <sighs> All right, fellow, we will. Hey, Bob. These are practically Philly Mignons. How come? Because I'm a happy guy, that's how come. With all the new taxes coming up, you're lucky I didn't wave the hamburger at the bun. Did you say coffee? That's right. Sis will be so grateful to you fellas, she'll treat you to a real blowout at the Gaucho Club if she... I mean, when she gets better. Well, that's more like it. She sings there, and I... I sort of work there, too. Not bad, that's a swell spot. Ralph! Excuse me. Tommy, this is Dr. Peter Piper. Howdy. Uh, did you? Uh, no, I didn't pick those peckled pepper. Drat, I can't even say it, and everybody asked me that. They're looking all over for you, Ralph. Duff's tearing his hair out. And what does our esteemed superintendent want, as if I didn't know? Dr. Grange found out you operated. Uh-oh, here it comes, pal. Two years internship shot to blazes. Do you mean you really use those knives and the things and the stuff? Yep. Oh! I thought you said he was a doctor. His mother wanted him to be and really thinks he will be. But you see, he's allergic to anything pertaining to medicine. Oh, I'm sure glad you operated on Sis instead of him. Oh, that's all right with me, son. I started on a charity case in pre-med, and when I came to, they'd taken out my appendix instead. Well, speaking of operations, I think I'd better go back and face old Ether Elmer. Oh, hey, give me a jigger straight mill quick. Dr. Sawyer, report to Superintendent Duff. Dr. Sawyer, report to Superintendent Duff. Dr. Sawyer, report to Superintendent Duff. All right, all right. Hurry. Sawyer, I'll take the responsibility of depriving the world of your medical genius. Yes, sir. I'm going to withhold your certificate of internship at this afternoon's exercises. Yes, sir. And if anything happens to that girl, you'll never get it. You understand? Yes, sir. Haven't you got anything to say but yes, sir? Yes, sir. I'm supposed to be a doctor, sir. That's what I've been studying for. To alleviate pain and suffering and save human lives when it's in my power to do so. I knew as much yesterday as I know today, but my certificate, which I may not get, says that I can operate today or tomorrow or next week, but not yesterday. I want to live by humanity, not slips of paper. I'd do it again if the opportunity called for it. Good day, sir. Goodbye. Oh, Ralph. Yes, sir. I hope she does get well. Our profession could use more like you. Why did you have to pick the last day of your internship? I didn't. You mean you? Yes, sir. <laughs> you gentlemen have a good grounding in medical theory and practice. But the knowledge you've gained here is only half the equipment you'll need in the battle which confronts you. You'll go out into a hostile world that gives no sustaining funds to young doctors. Oh, you'll get patients, yes. Most of them will have no money. But if you have backbone and willpower, you'll keep on. The mother whose child lies choking in its crib will call you day and night. The husband whose wife lies writhing in childbirth will turn to you helplessly. People will expect you to do miracles. And because you're a doctor, you're supposed to do it faithfully and cheerfully. When you do perform them, You'll become that final thing for which we've all worked and hoped. A good doctor. Good luck, gentlemen. I wonder where Ralph is. I don't know. Hey, you look sick. You better call a doctor. No. Hey, I am a doctor. Been looking all over for you, chum. Yeah? How'd it go? Uh, Duff gave his usual long-winded speech. How is she? I wish I knew. Chief of Staff's inside now. Why the long pan? 
When the great Dr. Sawyer operates, he can't miss. Can we call at the office for your certificate, Dr. Sawyer? It was a good job for an intern. Oh, thank you, Dr. Watkins. Tie your shoelace. After you, Doctor. Oh, no, after you, Doctor. Please don't let her talk too much. She's still weak. Beautiful girl like that shouldn't have to talk. Before you say hello, Diana, can I say thanks? There's an old saying that if you save a person's life, it belongs to you, in a way. I mean... Wait a minute. If you're going to start giving away things like that, you've got to let old Doc Blake get in a bit. Oh, this is Doctor... <laughs> he just told you. <laughs> Funny duck. All wool, winter and summer. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Butterflies. They're blue velvet with gold. Hey, take it easy, lad. She's supposed to be the patient. Oh, I was just thinking about the color scheme for our new <laughs> office. <laughs> you know, it's a lucky thing you met us down here. The next time you call on Blake and Sawyer, that well-known team of medical geniuses, we'll be on Park Avenue, knee-deep in rich hypochondriacs. And if the old sisters come in without a temperature, we'll hold their hands until they run one. Yes, sir, beautiful lady. Next stop, Park Avenue. Here's Nellie. Oh, our table. Oh, boy, now we can go to work. Yeah, on who? Where's her spot in the sun? Right in there, in the operating room. Careful, she bruises like a debutante. Ah, not a bad idea. More space for patients in a bare room. Oh, we've only been here a few days. Yeah, I know, I know. This old gal's been in more offices of young squirts like you than the postman. Cheer up, Nellie. I'll come for you after the first of the month. Come on, handsome. Cheery, soul. Yeah, I bet he laughs himself to sleep every night. <laughs> well, we can always put the bee on Ma if we get too hungry. Uh-oh, a visitor. So why are you bringing pills to these jerks? Why? Because they're friends of mine, understand? Oh, friends of yours. Ain't nobody got no friends. Not human friends. There's only one kind of friend to have, and that's just right that here. That kind of way you do. It's pretty and shiny, and you can depend on it. If a cop sees you, he'll put something pretty and shiny around your wrists. And you can depend on that. Give it a minute. Oh, no. I'll put it away. Too honest, I will. I'll keep it right here. Okay. You stay glued to that seat till I get back. Hey, I was going to get an apple, Joe. Thanks. Charge it to Doctors Blake, Soy, and Piper. They owe me plenty already. Hello, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hello, Quacks. We haven't even quacked yet. You will. Just take it slow and easy. Frank's the anxious one. I keep telling him it's better to pass guys going up the ladder than to kick them in the face sliding down. A patient? Just a gift from Joe Grant. Everything the rising medico needs from aspirin to zinc. Oh, we couldn't accept that, Joe. We have accepted. Thank you. Well, that's swell of you, Joe. I hope we can return the favor sometime. Maybe it can. Well, so long, pals. So long, so long Joe. It's all right, you can come in now. It wasn't a patient. Did the telephone ring? I hope. No, nah, it's ringing in our ears. They say that happens to you just before you starve to death. Hey, it is the phone. Well, where am I going? Offices of Doctors Blake, Sawyer, and Piper. What? The doctors are very busy. Oh, it's urgent. Just a moment, please. I'll take it, Junior. Dr. Blake speaking. Well, there are a few patients waiting somewhere. But uh, if it's that urgent, I think we might be able to come down. I'll check with my colleague. Hi, colleague. Hi, colleague. Hurry up. There are 40,000 doctors in Manhattan alone. All right. We'll be right there. Come in. 
call for a doctor, madam? <laughs> there, Seymour. I told you I'd call the doctor if you didn't eat your cereal. Your case, doctor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Diana and Tommy Wayne will tell you all about Lily and Billy. Billy who? Billy the Chili Kid. His career began at Coney. Selling burgers and bologna. For Tony. But Mahoney was a phony and he lost his stand at Coney Leaving Billy with a nickel and a dollar and a pickle to his name Oh, what a shame Then he met a senorita He said, howdy do, Juanita She said, call me Lily That was enough for Billy he said, how about a merger? And he really had to urge her. He repeated, yo quiero, till she gave him her dinero on the line. But Lily made him sign. Then Lily showed him how to make chili from the recipe of a guy who ran a diner down in Philly. Now Lily shills the chili for Billy. Kahane, con kahane. It's hot, come on and get it. If you wander down to Coney for a burger or bologna, go to Lee. Yeah. May the three of us never meet a crowd. And no matter what you order, first you'll get a glass of water, then a mess of beans and chili, and you'll eat until you're silly down at Billy's. But you pay the bill to Tell them who you pay it to. Billy! I certainly liked that, Diana. Liked it? I'm going home and smash all my phonograph records. Well, shall we stand here and grow tall, or shall we dance? Well, shall we? Hey, wait a minute. Who operated on this young lady, anyway? OK, look. I'll tell you what we'll do, boys. We'll time it. Five minutes for each of you. All right, come on. Uh, Ralph, uh, your uh, shoelace. Oh. brother a quarter, he'd go away. <laughs> Keep the quarter and we'll go away. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Very. Up there, I mean. And all those twinkling little lights in that building. Look at the one on the top floor. It's so bright, it's like a beacon. It is a beacon. It's Dr. Watkins' office. That old medico hasn't even got time to sleep. I can sleep all day if I want to. Oh, I've just got to get to the top, Di. I've got to. You will, Frank, because I want you to. <clears throat> You're three minutes and 30 seconds overtime, colleague. Now, you mind the baby. Come on, patient. <laughs> I can only get that job with the medical examiner. Yeah, they pay chicken feed. Chickens lay eggs. And after this spread, scrambled eggs would be mighty tasty. Well, anyway, we've still got Nellie. We had Nellie. Papa didn't forget you. You shouldn't ought to do that to Nellie. She don't like salami. 
wise guy. Look, you fellows may be content to dry up down here, but I can't take it. Afraid to answer the phone because it might be some creditor, and now I gotta keep quiet while that guy makes cracks. It's getting me down. Well, I... <clears throat> well, I'll gladly give the whole thing up if you will, and Ma doesn't find out. No. I wish you guys would make up your mind. I told you I'd take care of it. Scram. Come on, handsome. Well, thanks, Joe, but we can't accept anything more from you. No, we're doing pretty well now. I'll be able to pay you back soon. Sure you will. Am I worrying? Say, that wasn't a bad number I met down here last time. She go with the lease? No. With them. I get it. That's Pony. He gets awful lonesome. Just a big kid. Likes noise, too. A lot of laughs. Well, glad I dropped by. I just wanted to make sure my pals were doing all right. So long. So long. So long, Joe. I don't know why you hang around them guys, Joe. Naturally, you don't. I'm watching things getting tougher and tougher for them. Keep slipping them a bucket till now and then. Might turn out to be a good investment. But what does it get you now? I can't dope you out. No dope, Cap. Goodbye. Come in again, ladies. What can I do for you, gentlemen? You're Mr. Cooper, Mr. Philip Cooper? That's me. Nice place you've got here. You make a nice living out of it, don't you? Yes, I do. I do all right. Uh, something I can get you? No, thanks. I've got something for you. I'm from the Druggist Protective Association. I ain't in the market for anything. I don't want to sell you, Mr. Cooper. I want to protect you. Yeah, protect you. From what? Oh, fires, floods, accidents, competition. You know, it'd be pretty tough if someone opened a store across the street from you, wouldn't it, Mr. Cooper? Yes, sir. You're going to hear a lot about our association, and we're doing you a big favor. As a charter member, your dues will only be $25 a month. Just sign that application, Mr. Cooper, and... we'll say good day. Get out, or I'll call the police. You heard him. Sign the paper. Put that away, Barney. Well, Joe, I was just trying to... <laughs> Now get out. Come on, Brent. <sighs> that guy had not a... Shut up. Ralph must have got that job. I hope so, poor guy, hoofing it around all those stuffy bureaucrats. Your shoes look good. Well, I think I'll mosey on down to Dye's and sing happy birthday under a window and hope she thinks I'm Western Union. Uh-oh. I bet Seymour won't eat his cereal again. Hello? It's for you. Dr. Blake speaking. 3431... Front Street, up three flights, turn to the left, first door. Yes, sir, I have it, I'll be right there. Must be on the level, the guy knew my name. I'm sure glad he didn't ask for me. Here's your bag. Meet you and Ralph down at Dye's later. I'll tell Ralph, but I gotta go to a baby lecture with Ma. Okay. The antitetanus serum may kick back and produce a fever. You'll have to take it easy. I shouldn't be out in public much anyhow right now. Bullet wound, Joe. I'll have to make a police report. Bullet wound? He got hurt changing a tire. This evens up for the few bucks you owe me. Thanks. You can't take it. I need it, but I can't take it. Frank! You're not gonna be a sucker all your life. Who wants a statue erected to them after they're dead? I gotta make a police report, Joe. Lots of guys get hurt changing tires. It happens every day. Take my word for it. It's not a gunshot wound. I studied medicine myself once, I know. This 200 bucks will not only help clear up a lot of bills, but I'm thinking of your girl. 
I dropped into the gaucho club last night just to keep my fingers on the pulse of things. Well, she's sort of looking forward to that birthday party tonight. Maybe I shouldn't have done it, but I sent over a little trinket just a few minutes ago. No name, but she'll know who didn't forget her. Yes, sir. Uh, girls like that want a lot of attention these days. And from where I sat, she's worth it. Is this a happy birthday? That's very good looking. Uh-huh. Just like the sender. Ralph, I once said that when anyone saves a life, it belongs to them. Remember? I certainly do. I felt that way a long time, and I couldn't say anything. I've been wanting to talk to you, too, Diana, but I haven't felt I really should until tonight. Can I have that life back? Frank's a great guy. The best. Don't compliment the waiter. He'll expect a tip. Oh, thanks, darling, for this. Oh, yeah. And here's your tip. My first kiss. You would have to be a witness. <laughs> yeah, I would. What happened? Prosperity has stolen out of the night and struck us without warning. One shot of the needle and we're rich. Board on, boys. Hey, who got the needle? You were the patient. Buy it, Sawbones. Tomorrow we pay the landlord, get the x-ray machine, lift Nellie's face. Quiet, plutocrat. Dr. Sawyer can pay his own way now. He's working for the medical examiner. Great. Say, it's been a lucky day for all of us. Yeah. Well, here's still to the three of us. I'm in the medicine business, and you don't need guns to sell my merchandise. Relax a minute, will you, Chapman? I got a couple of things I want to talk to you about. One is I've organized the Druggist Protective Association. Oh, that's how Bonnie got shot. A lot of these druggists know I work for you. A lot of them are paying dues to my association. They wouldn't pay for you to squawk because the Chapman Chemical Company would be involved. So if you're smart, you'll just sit back and take your cut. Why, that's blackmail. Yep. Oh, and another thing. The doctor who fixed Bonnie up is a friend of mine. Maybe you can give him some of our compensation stuff. All right. But if they pick Bonnie up, he never worked for me. That's fine, Walter. Mind if I use your phone? Yeah, Joe. Whenever you guys need a doctor down there, call Frank Blake. I got the name. Frank Blake. I better go over myself. My wife just parted my hair with a baseball bat. Hello? Sorry, Dr. Blake's busy. Hello? Dr. Blake can't see you until tomorrow at 10. I'll make the appointment. I'm awfully sorry to keep you waiting so long, Miss Wayne. That's all right. Maybe for the second show, we'll get Frankenstein. <laughs> Just put it down there. Slug Grogan, you're next. Sorry, Slug. He's still fighting me hard. I goes into me crouch. And the first thing I know... Nine, ten. I thought it was the gong. So long, Doc. So long. <laughs> How long does this go on? The beauty contest, I mean. I thought scavenger hunts were passe. And you used to talk about a Park Avenue practice. We're doing all right. That's what's important. But darling, they're frightening looking. Even Peter's ma won't let him come to the office anymore. Well, we're eating caviar now instead of beans. Is that bad? Uh, I guess not. Hey, you forgot to say hello. Hello, darling. Well, here we are, the three of us again. I guess maybe I should have knocked. 
Oh, no, no, I wouldn't know how to kiss my girl without you around, but I can try if you want to pass on through. Yeah, I got a call to make anyway. If that's a trial, we don't have to call Ralph back. <laughs> Off. None of these guys are going anyplace, so take a good look. That's him? Which one? The one with his arm in the sling. Give me your telephone. Hey, you. Get back in line. Nobody told you to move. Just let me get a telephone. That's all I want is a telephone. Hello? Don't get excited, Barney. We'll take care of everything. Just keep your mouth shut. What do you say, Frank? No, it's perjury. Why? You don't know it was a gunshot wound. There were powder burns on his coat. Barney was arrested, not his coat. Those scars could have been acid burns of some kind. Yeah, that's all you'd have to tell him. Acid burns. Your appointments are piling up, Dr. Blake. I'll call you when I'm ready. You're doing a nice business here, Frank. My friends wouldn't think of going to anybody else. It wouldn't be much of a strain on your gratitude if you said a few kind words to the district attorney, would it? What if I don't? The district attorney isn't fond of forgetful MDs who don't report gunshot wounds. I treated Barney Millen at a flat on Front Street on July 20th for what I think were acid burns. See, Doc, the first time you needle me, and this time you spring me. Next time I'll throttle you. Oh, sure, Doc, any time you say. I told you you'd like Barney. He's a lot of laughs. Dr. Springs Gunman. District Attorney releases Barney Millen on protection racket charge. Dr. Frank Blake's testimony frees gangster. Alleges bullet wound was acid burn. But how did Frank ever get mixed up in a thing like that? And where is he? I don't know. Well, I'm not worried. The guy my sister's gonna marry wouldn't do anything wrong. I'm afraid you're a little ahead of time. That's Frank. Yeah, the postman always rings twice. Back to your crib, baby brother. I think I can manage. Frank, what's the matter? Nothing. Why? Hello, boys. Hello, Frank. Your face is so drawn. Oh, Frank, I've been so worried. The district attorney's office, this business in the evening papers. It... Well, it was just a routine matter. I treated a man for acid burns, and they wanted to know if it mightn't have been a gunshot wound. I gave them my opinion. And they freed the man. Yeah, they let him go. That's all there was to it. I told sis everything was okay, but you can't argue with a woman. What's it like at headquarters? Did they ask you where you were the night of January 16th and who the lady was you were with? I hope it was me. See, what are you driving at? And why the third degree? I've already been through one. I said it was acid burns. Do you think I'd lie? Please don't. All right, then. Forget it. Oh, I'm sorry, Di. I'm a little jumpy. I... I guess I'm tired. You've been working too hard. And with all this on your mind... She's right, Frank. Look, Diana, how about some coffee, huh? That's a swell idea. It'll only take a minute. Then I'll make some toast. Look who's going to make the toast. What's tough about that? All you do is burn the bread and then scrape it off. Cigarette? No, thanks. I've been smoking too much lately. Anything stirring down at the office? Oh, just the usual run of stuff. One of our patients left his fingerprints on Nellie. You think we'd better have a battalion expert check them over? Why do you say that? Oh, no reason. Except that I've been wanting to talk to you for quite some time, Frank, about our clientele, but they've been keeping me pretty busy down to medical examiners. Well, they may not be fancy, but they do come in, don't they? Yeah. But how? Oh, I don't know. Someone says something to someone else about us, the word passes along, you know how it is. 
And then we get a gunshot wound. All right. It wasn't acid burns. You knew I lied. It was a friend of Grant's. Joe's been sending all our business. Yeah, I figured that. Well, what could I do, Ralph? We had no practice. The bills were piling up. I couldn't take Diana anywhere. I was getting fed up. The going was tough, but... Well, Frank, it's your business. But I'd go to the DA and tell him the truth. Oh, well, that would mean my license. If they find out about it, it'll be worse. I'll take that chance. As you say, it's my business. Okay. Listen, Frank. They're keeping me pretty much on the hop downtown. I'm not at the office much anyway. You mean that you're trying to ease around to saying that you want to call it quits? Yeah. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. I'm sorry, but that is the way I feel. Say goodbye to Diana for me, will you? Coffee for the three of us. Tom's too young. Where's Ralph? He had to leave. He asked me to say goodbye for him. Goodbye? I mean, uh, good night. That's better. Hey, sis! Hey, sis, call up the fire department. Ask him to pick up a couple of loaves of bread on the way. Careful, don't scratch the furniture. I don't want the furniture to scratch Gwendolyn. Where's her spot in the sun? I'll take care of that. Yes, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Oh, it's you. Should I come back in 30 days or just wait? All right, all right. I'm going. Come on, handsome. Any calls, Miss Kane? No, doctor. But there's a man waiting for you inside. I didn't want to let him in, but he said you were former associates. Ralph? Nice joint you got here. My pals are like it, too. Only you've been turning them down lately. You've been too busy to handle them. Yeah, that's interesting. Because I don't see anything gathering outside but dust. Look, Joe, I helped you and you helped me. Let's leave it at that. I catch you. You saved a few bucks out of the business I sent you, and now you want to brush me off. That's right. I don't blame you. I'm not a nice guy. Well, so long. See you at the Ritz for tea. Yes, Doctor? Miss Kane, in the future, if Mr. Grant or any of his friends call, I'm out. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Blake, the Harold Supply Company called about the X-ray machine again. Better send him a check. For the full amount? Oh, no. Uh, send him 25 on account. <laughs> and you better keep your fingers crossed, Miss Kane, or you might be out of a job. You're telling me. I get lonesome sitting out there all day. It was almost a pleasure to see Mr. Grant. Almost, but not quite. Dr. Blake's office. Who's calling, please? Dr. Watkins, next door. Yes, Dr. Watkins. Dr. Blake, I wonder if you could do a favor for me. I'm going away on my vacation, and there's a patient of mine I'd like to send to you. Yes, Doctor. I think I can find time to take care of your patient. What is the name, please? Covington, Mrs. Covington. She's had three husbands and four faces. Oh, she's a very charming woman. Thank you so much. Goodbye. I'm glad old Watkins went away. I almost run out of diseases. What's your young physician's name? It's Dr. Frank Blake. Such a sympathetic name. I don't know if he's a good doctor. Who cares? He's good looking. That's for me. Dr. Blake's office. Dr. Blake is in consultation, Mrs. Owens. Of course he won't forget your appointment. Two o'clock, Mrs. Raleigh. Dr. Blake's office. I've told Dr. Blake about your dizzy spells, Mrs. Tewksbury. When you get to the W's, that's me, Wayne. Maybe if you sent in a lock of my hair, he'd remember. I know you've been waiting a long time, but we're so busy. Yes, doctor. You may go in now, Mrs. Covington. Thank you. 
so sorry, but I've just contracted a nervous breakdown. Is there a doctor in the house? Hello, dear. My, what enthusiasm. Maybe we need Ralph around. Have you seen him lately? No, I haven't, Di. I've called him several times, but he hasn't returned my call. I imagine he's rather busy. He has nothing on me. That's the Mrs. Covington in the outer office. And the Miss Diana Wayne in the inner office. When you break two dates in a row with a girl, she starts thinking. Thinking that if you don't see her tonight, in the future, call the Bureau of Missing Persons. Oh, I'm sorry, Di. I can't tonight. There's a dinner at the County Medical Society, which is rather important. And if I... Today's important to me, too. It's sort of an anniversary. Six months ago, Ralph saved my life and the three of us met. That was an occasion, wasn't it? Well, I've taken up a lot of time, and at your prices, I'll never be able to balance my budget. Just forget about tonight. Forget nothing. I tell you what, I'll break my date, meet you at the club for dinner, we'll say hello to Tommy, and have a little dance, huh? How's that? Swell! Just meet us there. You could pretend it was an accident. No, Di, thanks. I appreciate you thinking of me, but... Frank wants to see you. I know he does. He's called you and... I don't know what the trouble is between you exactly, but you were friends so long. We've missed you. I've missed you. I've missed you. How are things going around here? Oh, pretty well. You are now looking at Deputy Medical Examiner Ralph Sawyer. Wonderful. Is the promotion fun? Well, I went into training to save lives, Diana. But last week, I did a post-mortem that sent a man to the chair. That wasn't much fun. Oh, do you have to talk about those things? Peter Piper. Hello. So you're still a doctor. Well, Ma thinks so. I string along down here because Ralph's away most of the time and nobody bothers me. <laughs> a patient almost caught me yesterday, though. Mm. A Mrs. Coach, but I got away. <laughs> Boys, I've got to run along. I'm late for rehearsal now. Won't you change your mind about joining us tonight? I believe not. I'll get it. If you do, there'll be wine glasses for three. Dr. Piper speaking. Who's calling? Mrs. Coates? I'm afraid Dr. Piper won't be able to come. He just went out. <laughs> you want to remember this street. This is where you got a shoulder full of lead. Imagine that old geezer pulling a rod on me. If I ever see him again, I'll bat his ears down. Yeah, and you'll find yourself back in Sing Sing, wise guy. Keep your nose clean. tell you, I haven't seen Grant since I discharged him over a week ago. I don't know anything about any Druggist Protective Association. All right, if you hear anything, let us know. Yes, sir.
Get out of town and stay out. Oh, no. I didn't shoot the old man. Stupid here did. I couldn't help it. You're honest, I couldn't. You shut up. I'm trying to think. All they got on me is a description given by a dead man. Five foot eleven, scar on right cheek. Scar on right cheek. Suppose there wasn't a scar on my cheek. What are you talking about? What if I had it taken off? Your friend could do that for you, Joe. And your fingerprints downtown? There aren't any. I've never been picked up. I'm going to have an important consultation with my doctor. Take my heart, for instance. For instance, take my heart. It's never been in love till now, and now it wonders where to start. And take my lips, for instance. But please remember this. They've never tasted wine till now And now they find it in your kiss Oh, so lovely Oh, so new Oh, so thrilling, my darling One romance but I can't leave. If they should ever part, our love will always find them. If you take my heart. I'm sorry, Miss Wade, but Dr. Blake, he said... He called away. It was an emergency. Would I please understand? That is just what he said. But how did you know? I've just been gazing in my crystal highball. Well, I might as well get used to drinking alone. Or will you join me? Oh, no. I never drink my own liquor. Excuse me. <laughs> Stop stalling and say yes or no. There are a thousand coppers on my tail. It's only a couple of hours' work, and who's to know you did it? You better do it, Doctor. They're in the driver's seat. Do I tip off the cops about that gunshot wound, or do you play ball? All right. Here are the keys to the office. You go on ahead. If the cops pick you up, get rid of them. I'll swallow them. For you, I don't even have indigestion. Doctor, I got an idea. Whatever you do, you'll keep a record of it, right? Yeah, surgical notes, a couple of pictures before and after. Good. Keep them in a the safe place. They'll be our insurance against Grant in the future. Yeah. I'm sorry you missed Frank at the club, but personally, I'm glad you changed your mind and came. You changed my mind. Ralph, I've often wondered why you never moved uptown, even with your new job. Well, I figure sick people are just as important to their families downtown as they are uptown. Uh oh, shoelace again. Someday you're going to fall in love with a gal, and while you're taking time out to tie that lace, you'll see her snatched away by a smart rival. I did. Look, there's a light in Frank's window. He must have been called there. Let's go out. Well, come on, you two have been separated too long. It'll surprise him to see you. All right. I can't seem to say no to you. Maybe you'd better go on in first. I get it. The strong male, depending on the weaker sex, to pave the way. Okay, I'll fix it. Are you sure there won't be any mark left? Yes, I'm sure.
the matter? Is anything wrong with Frank? He, uh, he wasn't there. I guess the janitor left the light on by mistake. I didn't think he'd be here this late. And I prescribe a little sleep for you. After all, it is 1.30. All right, you can leave now. Help me out with this coat, will you, pal? That shot you gave me made me a little woozy. In case this ever comes up, you don't know anything about it, understand? I want to talk to you. It's late, Frank. Some other time. But I gotta talk to you. There's nothing to talk about. Someone operated on Grant. The wound hasn't even healed yet. What of it? They'd call you one of the medical examiner's hired boys, just a biased witness. Just before that druggist died, he talked of a scar on Grant's right cheek. There isn't any scar. There isn't the slightest doubt that Grant had an operation performed to get rid of that scar. But you said this wound would be completely healed by the time we brought him to trial. That's right. Then we've nothing to go on. Not unless we can find the quack who did the operating. Excuse me a moment. Oh, Frank? How's my girl? I haven't seen Diana. What are you doing here? Just wanted to talk to you. Why did you bring Diana up to my office late at night snooping around? Why didn't you stop in and say hello? I don't suppose you knew anything about Grant. No, I didn't. But things are beginning to clear up a little now. And uh, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. But you are. Do you think I'd be that much of a sucker to help them convict Grant and ruin myself at the same time? Not a chance. Listen, Frank. I just want you to know that nothing's changed between Diana and me. Understand? Yeah. All right, then leave it at that. The district attorney's office has been combing the city for Dr. Frank Blake, rumored to have been involved with Joe Grant in the cold-blooded murder of the druggist, Philip Cooper. The state feels that Dr. Blake's testimony would result in a quick conviction of Grant. The chamber of... Frank, I didn't know it was you who sent for me. What are you doing down here? Never mind that. I want you to do something for me. Well, sure, anything. Frank, 
Are you mixed up in this grand business? I mean, the way the paper's hinted. Tell me, how's Di? She's all right, considering everything. She's been upset and jumpy most of the time. It all came so suddenly, the shooting and the police and everything. Give these to Ralph. You don't have to explain anything, he'll know. And if Di asks anything about me, tell her I said hello and that everything's gonna be all right, huh? Okay. I still don't think you should be here. I'd rather stay. You might hear from Frank. I've already heard from him. He's in town, but he's all right. And I say to you that this trial is no monument to justice. Never before has a charge been brought on such slender evidence. A certain distinguishing mark on the defendant's face was altered by surgery prior to his arrest. Are you sure it was surgery, doctor? Possibly you mean police surgery. A rubber holes in a precinct basement? <laughs> May I get something from my briefcase? I have some photographs here which prove conclusively that surgery was performed on the defendant. They were taken before and after the operation. That's not so good. Blake sent those pictures down here. Quiet. Let's see how far Sawyer will go with them. Perhaps Dr. Sawyer will tell the court where these photographs came from. From whom did you get these pictures? You will answer the question, Dr. Sawyer. I'm sorry, but I can't answer that question. In that case, strike Dr. Sawyer's testimony regarding the photographs from the record. I don't like this. If Blake ever shows up and identifies those pictures, you are talking to a ghost. Look, send Pete to me. He's got a little errand I want him to do. Yeah? Besides which, Joe told me to tell you that Blake's trying to hurt him and you too. Well, nobody's gonna hurt my pal Joe. Now, me neither. The case of the people versus Joseph Grant, accused of murder, seems to be bogging down. Dr. Sawyer of the medical examiner's office introduced photographs and evidence to establish the claim of the state, but on cross-examination refused to tell where the pictures came from. I quote the district attorney. It is hard for me, as district attorney of this county, to believe that a member of the medical profession Which room is the Joe Grant trial? Part three, first turn to the right. Thanks. Mama, I got him. Mama, I got him. Can you tell me where no. they are? I got it out of the candy bar. Oh. Now that counsel have concluded presentation of testimony, the court has taken under advisement the defendant's motion for dismissal on the grounds of insufficient evidence. As a rule, the court I do closed. not favor directed verdicts, but in this particular instance, I must depart from the custom. I assume that this intrusion means something of interest to this case? I'm Dr. Frank Blake. I believe Your Honor was about to order a dismissal. Dr. Blake has any pertinent evidence to offer. We will listen. This case is not yet closed. Have Dr. Blake take the stand. Excuse me, sir. Could you see better if I took off my hat? No. Quiet. Court's in session. If you can't be quiet, leave the room. 
Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Sit down. Will you state your name, occupation, and reason for being here, please? Frank Blake. I'm a physician. I perform minor surgery on the defendant's face immediately after the shooting of Mr. Cooper, the druggist, proof of which is in Dr. Sawyer's possession at the council table. I don't want you to... What are you waiting here for, buddy? A pal of mine at the grand trial. The trial's just over, but don't park here too long. Bring Frank this way. I think so. Frank, I just wanted to say thanks. Is that all? That's all. Someday you may lose that shoe entirely. Here's to you. Here's to you. Here's to him. Hello. I'm sorry I'm late, but I've been dodging a patient all day. Dr. Piper, somebody's calling you on the phone. It sounds like a patient. Oh, no. Please. Then why did you leave this number? Well, I was expecting a call from Ma. Maybe you better take a doctor with you. Come on, we'll all go. Oh, heck, I can't. I I'm a working man. Don't rush me. I don't feel so good. Hey, if you don't pull yourself together, I'll have to give you ether. And I'll take it. Gladly. Mr. Jones? Yes, I'm Mr. Jones. Did you send for a doctor? Yes, I hope you're in time. Well, where's the patient? The mother's in there. Follow me. There she is. 